Hey, welcome back. In today's video, I want to talk to you about a mistake that we just recently made here in Cochise County, Arizona on a permit. And we want to share it with you guys so you don't make the same mistake we did. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Carrie and my other half Douglas and I are homesteading off grid here in Cochise County, Arizona, which is in Southeast Arizona. We are in the high desert and we're up at about 4,200 feet. We are building our homestead from scratch and we're building under the Cochise County owner builder opt out permit. If you, this is something that might be interesting to you guys, you'll probably want to subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to be talking about all things related to homesteading and building a house. We are a little bit older in years. We're in our early 50s, so we're doing this kind of later in life, but better late than never, right? So we've learned a lot of things along the way that we want to share with you guys. I'm going to just be solo on this video today. Doug is busy working on a really cool goat house that's going to be the permanent home for the goats. As most of you know, we've had them in a semi-permanent structure that needs to go and we need to move them. So we're moving up the hill. We're going to be a little closer to our, our permanent build site and he's working really hard so we can get that move done here in the next few days. So I'm here coming to you today because I want to share a mistake that we made. Um, not on purpose, but we learned something. And I don't think I talked about it in my original Cochise County Owner Builder opt-out permit video. So this video is kind of an addendum to that video. If you haven't watched that video yet and you're interested in the Owner Builder opt-out permit here in Cochise County, I'm going to link it. It's going to be up above here that you can click. Um, and if you can't see that link, then go down to the description in the notes and I will put the link to that video there. There's great information there. Everything that I gave you in that video is all correct. Um, however, we learned something in addition to what I shared in that video. And you're gonna wanna stick to the end of this one because I'm gonna share another really important detail. And this is actually the whole reason why this happened. So stick around to the end. All right, so most of you know that we are living in our RV here temporarily on our 36 acre parcel here in Cochise County. And we are living in our RV as we build our homestead and as we build under the owner builder opt out permit. You cannot live in an RV in Cochise County unless you have a permitted use like a residential permit going. So the first mistake we made was not realizing that we were not getting information on our email. So I made the mistake of assuming that every time something happened with our permit in the Cochise County system that they use, I think it's, I'm not sure what it's called, I can't remember. But anyway, I mistakenly assumed that if anything happened that we would get a, a letter in the mail telling us whatever it was. So my first piece of advice is make sure you're logging into the Cochise County system regularly if you have permits that you're working under and check for any notifications because those notifications I, we did not get anything by snail mail we did not get anything by email didn't get a text didn't get a phone call so the mistake that we made was we let our rv permit lapse and because that rv permit is tied to the owner builder opt-out permit they're tied together. So I don't understand this process, but we were out of compliance with our IV, RV permit. So that expired and it closed and it took the owner builder opt out permit and it also closed that. And I don't know if that's something that their system does automatically or what, but we basically got in trouble, <laughs> which Doug and I are, we like to follow the rules and make sure we're doing things the right way. So we didn't realize it had already been six months that we had been 
living in our RV here on the property. So if that's something that you're planning on doing, this is really important. And we've heard people talk about it, but we never saw any information on it. And that's our mistake because we should have been logging into the system and looking for any notifications and we did not do that. So that was our mistake. So make sure that you're doing that. And this whole thing could have been avoided. So basically what happened was the permits got closed, which triggers their system to send that to the code enforcement office. The code enforcement office came out, did an inspection, clearly could see our RV on our, on our lot here, took a picture of it, sent us a notification of a violation and and it was it became a case it became an open case so now the burden goes to us to fix that so it was actually a very easy fix and the code enforcement person that i talked with at the county was great very helpful and i also spoke with somebody in planning about how to avoid this next time and now i'm going to tell you what you can do to avoid this so what you're going to want to do when you open up your owner build, any kind of permit with the county, whether it's owner build or opt out permit, if you are living in a temporary RV on your, on your lot, you will need to either have an inspection or you're going to need to send in progress pictures every six months. And when you apply for that permit, when it's approved, it's automatically put onto a timeline of six months. So whenever that permit goes into effect, you've got six months from that date. And one thing I want to remind you guys all is Doug and I are not experts in permitting by any stretch of the imagination. This is just information that we want to share with you that, sorry, that we've, that we've experienced. So you need to do your own research, do your own reading, call the county, talk to them. They're super helpful. This is just what we experienced and we wanted to share it so that you're aware of it and also to entertain you because we think it's pretty funny that we got a code enforcement violation. Anyway, so what you're going to want to do is you have the two options. You can either call and have them send an inspector out to see what your progress is at, or you can just attach pictures right into the permit for the RV and that will trigger the system. I apparently, I don't know if it goes through a person or if it does it automatically, but when you send those pictures in before the end of your six months, it will, as long as you've made progress, it will trigger another six months. So it kind of pushes that permit forward. They understand that if you're building on your own on the owner builder opt out permit and you are living on your property, Typically, it's just going to be one or two of you, right? Unless you have kids that are great about helping. It's just Doug and I, we're building everything from scratch by hand and it takes time. And especially since we're older now, it takes a little bit more time. So they understand that and, but they do want to see that you're making progress. The county's trying to avoid people moving onto their property in an RV, whether it's a nice RV or an old RV, whatever. They don't want people sitting in that RV for years on end and not doing anything to improve the property. I totally understand that. They don't want it to turn into a junkyard, right? And we don't want that for our property either. And I know our neighborhood wouldn't want that. So they want to see you that you're moving forward with things. So what I did was to resolve this situation for us, I contacted the planning department and I said, here's what happened. Our permits have both been closed. I don't know what to do. Do we get them reopened or what do we do? And she advised that we go ahead and apply for brand new permits for both the temporary RV and for the owner builder opt out and just start the whole process over. And she said, just make sure that you get into the system before the end of that six months on your RV permit, upload some pictures or have us come out and inspect. I think there's a fee to inspect. I want to say it's around $70, 60 or 70. So we much prefer just to take some pictures of the progress that we're making on our build and send it, just attach it into the, into the online system that they have to manage permits. So that's what you'll want to do. Don't make the mistake of thinking that they're going to call you, email you, mail you something in the mail. That's not going to happen. So what happened was in February, our permit had expired. We just had no clue. We didn't even think about it. And we went into violation because of that. So it's all fixed now and we're all good. And we're actually getting ready to move. We're going to actually move the RV and all of our operation up the hill closer to where the home build site is 
so that we can be a little bit more efficient and um, we're, so we're moving all the animals up there. That's why Doug's working on the goat house. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. It's really important and again, a disclaimer again, this is just for entertainment purposes and for your information on what we've experienced. So I hope you found it helpful. I know this was a really short video but it's really important and it's not a big deal to fix. The county was great to work with. They were very helpful. They weren't jerks about it at all. But if you can avoid something like this, we would recommend it because it is a little bit stressful. I actually used to work in code enforcement. So to get a code enforcement violation, I was kind of mortified. I'm not going to lie. So <laughs> it's all fixed now and we're all good. But um, just make a mental note of that if you're planning on building in this manner. Okay. Thank you guys for joining along today. I know it was a quick one, but we appreciate you tuning in. Give us a like and subscribe if you like this video. If you didn't like it, I guess give it a thumbs down. And uh, if you have questions or comments, leave them below and we'll see you guys soon.